Indian scale. Hello and welcome to Happy Hour along with Bob Lee. I'm Dan Patrick. A week ago at this time, we were talking about the 64 who were in. Tonight, we begin with the 16 survivors, including a coach rekindling memories of the 1960s. Some memories indeed today from the Bear. You know, the glory of this tournament is the way that dreams can explode into reality and today's headlines merge with yesterday's history. Sunday, the Midwest region gave us the number one seed with real championship hopes, Kansas, against Texas El Paso. 26 years removed from its only national title, the Jayhawks, huge favorites against Don Haskins' team, the Bear in springtime. What did he do? He four-cornered Roy Williams, the former Carolina assistant, Johnny Melvin to Roy Howard. And only 27 all at halftime. This is not what Roy Williams expected today. The Miners in the second half, an eight-point run. Eddie Rivera caps it with a jumper. The Jayhawks hang in there. Steve Woodbury hits a three. And Kansas is only down by those three points. And the Bear begins to sense we big underdogs are in this thing for keeps. Inside a minute, UTEP only up by three. Johnny Melvin. And the Miners by five. Kansas another shot, but Woodbury stripped by Prince Stewart. Scramble for the ball. Roy Howard will hit to punctuate this victory. The Miners with the major upset. And for the Jayhawks, who played in the final last year, bitter disappointment. I'm proud of this team. I'm just like Coach, you know. What we accomplished, um, I'm just proud of this team. They have a lot to be proud of, but today's victory goes to UTEP. UTEP put that spread offense into their repertoire at Saturday's practice. The Bears said Roy couldn't have known about it unless he had tape of yesterday's practice. Victory 6-0-6 for Don Haskins in the first time since the 1966 championship game that UTEP and then Texas Western has gone beyond the second round. What a victory today. Same region are equal parts Rand McNally and Street and Smith. Endurance and wonder. Now that we're out of the Sweet 16, though, we can take a breath and assess the reality and the fantasy of each school's chance to leave Minneapolis as the national champion. The Final Four is the first goal. Four squared is 16, and we stand four square behind Jim Bergamo. See, he checks this year's crop. North Carolina is there for the 12th straight year. The last time Dean Smith failed to reach the Sweet 16 was 1980 when the Tar Heels fell to Texas A&M. Duke, gunning for its fifth straight trip to the Final Four, is in the Sweet 16 for the seventh straight season. In all, six teams are repeat performers in the Final 16. While North Carolina and Duke are regulars in the next round, Florida State is in the Sweet 16 for the first time in 20 years when the Seminoles lost to UCLA in the Final. Cincinnati last got this far in 1975. As usual, there are Cinderella stories, with New Mexico State advancing as a 12th seed. It marks the eighth straight year that a team ranked 11th or lower has made it this far. The Aggies last made the Sweet 16 in 1970, going all the way to the Final Four under then head coach Lou Henson. There are several coaches looking for another championship ring. Bobby Knight is trying to join John Wooden and Adolph Rupp as the only coaches with four or more NCAA titles. Mike Krzyzewski's Blue Devils are trying to become the first repeat champions since UCLA in 1972-73. Dean Smith has gone a decade since his only national championship. Steve Fisher would love to see deja vu as his Wolverines advance to Lexington in the Southeast Regional. Three years ago, you'll recall, Michigan went through Atlanta and Lexington before winning it all in Seattle. Don Haskins pulled off perhaps the biggest upset of this year's tournament as his minors stunned Kansas. The Bear won with Texas Western back in 1966. And just how strong is this field? Ten of the 16 schools have already won national championships. The Cowboys won with Henry Iva in the 40s. One of the biggest winners in the tournament so far is the ACC, with Georgia Tech's upset of USC, plus Florida State joining Duke and North Carolina, the league has a quarter of the Sweet 16. Over the past five years, the ACC has placed the most teams in the Sweet 16 ahead of the Big Ten and the Big East. The Sweet 16 will be a reunion of sorts. Duke guard Bobby Hurley faces his brother, Seton Hall Reserve Danny. The Hurleys, Terry DeHare and Jerry Walker, all attended St. Anthony's High School in New Jersey. Eddie Sutton gets to return to Lexington, Kentucky, but instead of worrying about the Wildcats, he takes Oklahoma State into the Southeast region semifinals. Speaking of the Cats, Kentucky will try to duplicate its 21-point December win over Massachusetts. 
Florida State will try to avenge last year's NCAA loss to Indiana. The leading regular season scorer left in the tournament is Jimmy Jackson, who averaged 23 points per game this season. The leading rebounder remaining is Michigan's Chris Weber at just over 10 a game. Grant Hill of Duke is the top field goal shooter at 63%. Massachusetts is the hottest team with a 14-game win streak. And Duke is the highest scoring team at 89 points a game. The Blue Devils are also the best shooters at 54%. Duke is also shooting for something else, another national championship. Everybody's shooting at them. Sweet 16 on a busy December. It is an athletic director's dream. And four of this Sweet 16 doubling their pleasure with bowl games and also a trip to the tournament's third round. And uh, really great when you think about who's in this final 16. You get so caught up in what's happening today, you get something like a Cincinnati or a UTEP, then Texas Western, making it to this far. It gives a chance for the current generation of fans to reflect on guys, what Don Haskins did back in 66 and what the Bearcats did in the early 60s. Actually, you go back to Florida State as well, a school that's known for their football, but back in 1972, lost to Bill Walton in UCLA. Hugh Durham, who's George's yeah. coach, was coaching there. So bringing back some of these uh, teams from yesteryear. Still to come on the show, our spring training tour continues. We take you to Vero Beach. A look at the